All right. Good day, everyone. As the former speaker told that the noise, especially in the social media and information noise, may be annoying or may damage the reputation of your brand, I am going to talk about that information noise might be dangerous for the integrity of the state, and the, this kind of noise can be lethal. Especially lethal if you have a military conflict as we do in Ukraine. And the uh, um, crisis communications have been the staple of Ukrainian political communications for the last two years. What do you think are the two most favorite words of almost every military commander or officer when talking to the media? It's no comment. They love to just abstain from any comment whatsoever, not comment anything, and it's better not to just approach the soldiers or the officers because they just don't want to talk to the media. Unfortunately for them, it doesn't work this way anymore. Any kind of news, especially if you have so many people with their smartphones, and when almost every second soldier has a smartphone in his hand on the front line, he can post, he can say that the commanders might lie, or he may just express his genuine grievance that he's sitting there on the front line and some other guys having a good time back in the capital in Kiev. So how do you approach that? How do you convince first your own army and then the entire nation that it has a worthy defenders and the communications are actually in the hands of the government, not in the hands of uh, an, another state which wages war against Ukraine? Let me give you a small background, even though I guess most of you will know about that, that uh, we had a revolution that started from one Facebook post. That sort of tells a lot about the influence of the social media today. And uh, immediately after the uh, violent clashes, uh, uh, as a result of which the new government was installed and the former authoritarian president uh, escaped to Russia, the Crimean Peninsula get annexed by uh, Russian special ops, special servicemen, and then the military conflict unfolded in eastern Ukraine. One of the biggest features was the sense of panics, which was instigated by Facebook posts, by a wave, a tide of different uh, news features uh, produced by the Russian media. And it wasn't limited just to TV and conventional um, TV channels, radio stations, and so on, but it was spread by the social media. And uh, lots of local people believed in that. You probably heard about the most uh, um, popular um, uh, fake information about the sort of crucified boy in one of the eastern towns. Even though the report was absolute lie, it inspired many people to go and fight against the Ukrainian army. The more recent one is uh, something that happened in Germany when um, a Russian girl was allegedly raped by a Syrian refugees. And Russian media used this narrative to provoke different kinds of uh, negative comments about the EU and the policy on the refugees. It turned out the entire report was a lie, but still it was used very skillfully by the Russian media. So this is one of the iconic pictures of the annexation of Crimea. You can see the Russian soldiers pointing their guns at one Ukrainian soldier. He's in a very bad Soviet-style uniform. He doesn't carry a weapon. He's genuinely confused how the neighbor state may invade without declaring any kind of war. But it sort of captures in what state Ukraine has been two years ago, without the army as such, without the modern equipment, and being absolutely incapable of mounting defense. However, two years after, you see a different picture. The first one at the top, you can see the parade on the Independence Day last August. And the one at the bottom is the demonstration of how the West has supported the country over the whole time, providing military equipment, financial, military assistance, as well as a humanitarian aid. These pictures are now not just some kind of a things that you capture, but are tools to show the people how Ukraine isn't alone. And uh, this is one of the crucial things for us as people working in the administration to project the image of capable military enjoying the support of the West. So how do you make a trustworthy army amid the information war, especially if you started from a really unbeneficial positions that 
people don't trust you, people don't really trust the government as well, and that's one of the similar things that uh, I have heard about uh, Moldovan politics and many politics in general. People don't believe they are politicians because they get fooled so many times. Uh, and uh, there are key f things to bear in mind, especially when dealing with social media, that nothing is small to ignore. Any minor thing may escalate into a, a huge information bomb. Then another thing is uh, if you, there is a problem, you may not take it seriously. You can mock it, you can make fun of it, and it's going to be much more shareable because people love to share more positive emotions than negative ones. Then there is a cross-platform engagement. So instead of just issuing a press release, although I realize that most of you even, well, don't consider press release as a source of information, but for the government, it, it has been a huge step forward to come up with uh, some of the digital tools. And finally, invent new traditions, invent new narratives, provide new pictures, like the Independence March or other celebrations at exhibitions that promote the values that you want to. If you fail to do that, the effect might be explosive. It just, uh, the ramifications of that, for instance, one of the uh, incidents that we had last December, uh, the group of uh, pro-Russian proxies, the militants, entered into the, one of the villages uh, in eastern Ukraine, Kominternova. It is a small place, not significant from the military point of view, but still there were people living there. Once the militants came into the village, entered it, then the, uh, there was a huge wave in the social media that the army do it doesn't do uh, any kind of thing to protect the people, that the government is horrible and uh, you have to do something. Even some of the ministers uh, who have a reputation of being Facebook ministers because they spend so much time in Facebook, started to undermine the entire narrative saying that everything is absolutely terrible. And that's why you have to react really quickly. If you fail to do so, it's going to be much harder to convince people that you're controlling the environment. It's going to be other party, in this case Russia, that dictates um, its conditions. Other thing is that the government and the public officials, especially if you talk about the military, they are very conservative. And uh, if you're a journalist, you probably saw that you file a media request and you have to wait a lot of time to get a response. And when you get a response, it's usually meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. It has all these abstract round phrases. And uh, one of the dangers is that there are some confidential information. Let's see the uh, uh, setting up of these special forces uh, in Ukraine, a brand new military unit, but it ceased to be private. You have to share. You have to. Uh, up update people of how it works and uh, why it is necessary. And finally, internal becomes external. When almost every soldier has a phone or has a relative who can post stuff, you cannot hide problems in the army. They automatically go to the media and then you have to sort of have this combined approach of dealing ex internally as well as externally. I want to tell you a lot about using humor because I love when jokes turn productive, especially if we talk about really uh, sad events like war and conflict. And one of the best examples which was is uh, there was a Russian fake in December 2015 that uh, from January 1st, from the new year, Ukraine will be covered by total mobilization. So every male uh, aged from 16 to 60 years old is going to join the military and be forced to fight uh, in the East. It was a lie, but instead of just filing a press release which won't have any coverage at all, the Facebook page where we helped to, con uh, to contribute to, to this team uh, of the general staff decided to use humor. And they told, well, males will not be mobilized from January 1st, neither women will be mobilized, neither their pets will be mobilized, and if you spread the fake information, the Father Christmas and St. Nicholas will never come to you and give presents. So it gets shared a lot. It gets over uh, 4,500 sh uh, shares. Another example is uh, the great meme, if you, if you remember, this is Bill, with a grown up man, which is like, this is Bill, he's great, he's smart, be like Bill. The general staff used a similar model and told, this is Mikola, he saw some incredible information from unverified source, but he's smart, he doesn't spread it further. Be like Mikola. 
So these kind of things actually attracted a lot of attention of the people. They, they love to be, to be associated with smart people who don't spread some fa fabricated information as well as uh, it's something that uh, appeals to them. Another aspect is infographics because this is a crucial element to bridge the gap between the military and the civil population and it was task of our team uh, of the project called One Voice Policy of the Presidential Administration to provide as easy and as uh, colorful description of what we are doing with the army, how we change it. You can see that uh, the uniform has changed dramatically of the soldiers or there are discussions about the army reserve and which model take, the Swiss, the Israeli or Estonian. So these are the accessible formats that were pioneered in the government. As well as marking the days of airborne forces or tank troops, you just get nice pictures, so some of the stories of the battles and the heroes, like the airborne paratrooper or tank driver, and people will start to see not just an institution, but the people behind it and how they conduct heroic deeds to save the country. Finally, I want to tell you about more about military as art. I would love to uh, just encourage you to go to the website secondfloor.gallery and that's one of the projects that we have been developing in the last couple of months uh, of the exhibitions in the presidential administration, art exhibitions. Many of them promote uh, military heroes and military deeds of the Ukrainian armed forces. And uh, you can see uh, the pictures from there. Uh, that's uh, of two exhibitions, one per Ukraine, um, Ukrainian soldiers and others of uh, uh, replicating different uh, masterpieces of the Renaissance art, just showing you how you can transform something being very conservative into engaging and uh, just appealing to the people. And the last one is invented traditions. You, saw, you maybe saw this picture, it's, it's Independence Parade and uh, uh, well, Parade tradition is something that uh, uh, we had for almost two centuries. But on the top of that, we added media campaigns. So there is, uh, um, we realized the importance of using digital tools in a way that you can make video clips, social, um, social media trends, as well as like Twitter flash mob and Twitter storms to promote these traditions. And being in conflict, these kind of images stimulate not just the trust of the people to the government and their patriotism, but also it helps to tackle any fabricated information because on the other hand, you can see these pictures, you can see visual evidence that it, Ukraine is not a failed state and it has a formidable army. And of course, don't forget about the soldiers generated content. They love to take pictures from the front line, making videos, and the last one is don't forget, oh yeah, that's behind the scenes. So how the modern offices look uh, of our team that it's, it seems to be some sort of a, um, well, very traditional bureaucratic um, room with full of doors. It's an open space and it's important to provide genuine communication. The last one, don't forget about the puppies and the kittens because they work really well and uh, actually the Ministry of Defense Facebook page, um, Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, has a separate album uh, devoted to animals who help the troops and uh, who are at the front line as well. With this, uh, with this thank you very much and I hope that uh, if you have any questions I will be happy to help. Thank you.